Get it one, be aging out here. I've got two Dell Latitudes 5401s right here. Now, I'm actually revisiting this particular notebook because firstly, it's actually quite a surprising performer. And secondly, I've actually, from my previous videos, I've actually got a few questions from my subscriber list. So I thought I might just answer with the video. Now, if you haven't checked out the review for this, uh, I'll put a link in the description below and you probably see a little pop-up here as well too. So be sure to check that out after this if you want to. Now, the first part of this video will be about the screen. Now, these two computers are differently specced. Now, they do, both do have full HD screens, but this one is the non-touch version and this one here is the touch version of it. So. We're going to look at the color calibration and also have luminance and brightness of these two screens. Now the second part of this video is we're going to look at the different specs of it for the processor. Now this one here I've got here is the i5 version and this one here is the i7 version. And I've had some questions about the difference between the performance of these two computers and how they react. So we'll look into that as well. So let's dive into it now. Let's test out the luminance or the brightness of the two screens. Now, we do need to take a note of this measurement here called current. It is measured in candela per square meter. Now, one candela per square meter equals one nit of brightness. So 100 candela per square meter is 100 nits. So this is the non-touch version of the screen, so as you can see. So let's start the measurement now. And there are 10 increments to the brightness of the screen. So we're gonna work our way from the very bottom all the way to its most brightest setting. So every two seconds, I'm going to bring up the increment. So let's go down to the lowest settings first. So now this is the lowest setting here. So for photographers and videographers, it is recommended to have the brightness of the screen at 100 to 120 candela per square meter. So let's go find that point for you guys. So let's bring this all the way down and let's work our way between, see if we can get into that within that range. So increment number one, increment number two, increment number three, increment number four, Increment number five. Looks like we've hit 103 here. Increment number five. Increment number six gets us to 123. So we need to bring it down to increment number five. So for the non-touch screen version, you want increment number five. So going back to the touch screen version, we're going to actually find that target measurement of between 100 to 120 candela per square meter. So going back down to zero, going up to increment number one, Increment number two, increment number three, increment number four. At increment number four, we are at 103 candela per square meter. Increment number five brings us to 129, which we've gone over the mark. So you're looking at increment number four is where your range will be between 100 to 120. So this is our target that we're trying to hit. So for the touchscreen version, you're looking at the fourth increment of the brightness of the screen. If you find this very useful, put a comment below and give me a like, because I'd definitely love to hear the feedback about if this test on luminance is actually very useful for you guys or not. I'm going to use the Spider 3 Pro software to actually demonstrate the color shift when the screen is color calibrated hardware. I just find the Spider 3 Pro software just demonstrates the actual color shift overall nicely. This is the i7 version with a full HD touchscreen version. So this is what it looks like at a factory, after calibration. At a factory, after calibration. I can definitely see, just like the full HD one with non-touch is after calibration, it does warm up a little bit and there's a little bit more magenta to it as well. Now the full HD non-touch version is calibrated with the Spider 3 Pro. So this is what it looks like when it comes out of factory. And this is after calibration out of factory after calibration 
I can definitely see before and after that after the calibration it does warm up a bit and also it's got a little bit more of a magenta feel to it as well too so looks to be very consistent there. Now I did run the benchmarks for these two computers here and I'll put them up right here now. So first off is the Citibench release 15 version. So have a look at those two there and I'll also put up the pass mark for these two computers for the i5 and i7 there for you to have a look at. We're having a look at the thermal throttling on both of these two computers here. So I've had these two computers, i5 and i7, running at 100% CPU level and also the disk running at close to 100% as well. Now this has been going on for about 20 so minutes and surprisingly both of the i5 and i7, the actual CPU speed is usually sitting at about 2.88 gigahertz. Uh, the i7 does fluctuate a little bit more uh, than i5 but you can see here on the i7 here, you're looking at around anywhere between 2.7 to 2.88. So it fluctuates a little bit there, whereas the, two, whereas the i5 does sit mostly at 2.88 steadily. With the i5 and i7, I did take note of the temperature and how loud this computer gets at 50% and also at 100% processor utilization. Now, from a previous video, you notice that I actually took the measurement near where the caps locks and the shift key. Now that's probably where the most hottest area is, which you actually do touch. Uh, so it's probably the most important part of the computer with the temperature there. So I actually at the end did take the temperature reading from there again. So with 50% utilization, the actual temperature was sitting, both of them were sitting about 36 degrees Celsius, which is pretty much the same. And as for how loud the computer gets, it gets anywhere between 33 to 35 decibel. So they're both very similar in that sort of sense. So that wouldn't make much difference there. Now, with the actual processor running at 100% utilization, both of them were hitting around about 39 degrees Celsius, and the actual loudness was anywhere between 44 to 46 decibels. So very similar again. So it really makes not much difference in that sort of terms. I'm going to share the color profiles that I created using this X-Lite i1 display for these two screens here. So that is the full HD, non-touch and touch versions. And I'll put the link in the description below so you can actually check them out if you wish to do so. Now be wary, it is running off my ambient light, but at least this gives you a very good starting point. Now if you do work with color professionally, I do advise to purchase your own hardware color calibrator. They're definitely worth their money for sure. Now I'm also going to give you a quick preview of what I'm going to do for the next video and that is I'm going to compare the Dell Latitude 5401 with this Dell Latitude 7400. Now the reason why I'm doing that is because these two computers are very similar in price now. So that's actually quite a nice comparison for these two computers and which ones to buy and they're very similar in terms of like weight as well too. So be sure to check that video out when I do post that up. If you find this video informative and enjoyed it give it a like and also if you can try and share it that would be definitely helpful for me as well and if you haven't done already subscribe to my channel by hitting that subscribe button on the bottom right hand corner of the screen i do try to upload a new video every tuesdays and fridays and just remember imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting i'll see you next video